Goed, ons volgende lezing wat aan die beurt is, is ook ene wat uh, Dr. Maakreitser vir ons gaan lever, en het gaan oor Neglected Reformational Principles for Cultural Transformation, en basis waarop het neerkom, um, dit is een PAD wat hy bezig is om, om te doen, um, dit is sy derde ene, uh, wat hy binnenkort gaan ingee, en um, ek sou sê, um, ek het so vinnig dierom gegaan, ek sou dit opsom, as soort van een opsomming van dit wat ons die afgelopen paar dagen gedoen het hier, maar uit de misiologische perspectief, en dat ons moet uitgaan um, in die wereld in, en die evangelie moet verkondig, um, maar jylle sal sien, soos wat die skyfies opkom, dan gaan jullie van die thema's wat ons oor gepraat het, sal weer herhaal word, so ek dink het is eigenlijk een goede lezing om die seminar mee ook af te sluit. So, Mark, baie dankie dat jy bereid is om hierdie lezing vir ons te doen. Jy kan maar voor en toe kom en uh, dan gaan ons die lezing afskop. Is it testing one, two, three? On? Okay. Dominic Slavert Le Cornier, I can them all by a yara and Francois work, but with Dartig yara. I was here in South Africa from um, three and Tachtach to two and um, Nigentig. And um, had begun by a um, leaf. Uh, gekry vir die Afrikaner volk, ek het Afrikaans bykie geleer, en um, die eerste uh, proefskrif was oor die paradigme verskyving vanaf uh, apartheid theologie, uh, raasvolk en nasie, tot die kerk en samenleving, wereldkerks, werkraad van kerkes, ekumenische uh, uh, ek, theologie, dit was die eerste, en Dominique uh, Slavert zei, nou, jy doen dit voor ons. En ik zei, ja. En die tweede een was, uh, the, uh, towards a theology of ethnicity, um, where God gives us the, uh, the vision from Genesis to Revelation to um, plant churches in every language group in the world and then help them have their culture transformed. So ik zal oorskakel uh, terug naar Amerikaans. En, um, ek is nie Engelsman nie, ek is een Amerikaner. Dit is een groot verskil tussen die twee. Um, anyways, um, and then the third, I mean, it was, I, I did it, and they already 25 years ago, this document, and it's the third work that I wanted to get published, and it is this, that what, I, what I now call the Eagle Vision, I didn't call it then. Um, why is living in Christ's single kingdom? The way I s see history moving is there's one Kunikrek, there's one kingdom, one king, but he is the taken the Jewish kingdom of David, and now he's expanding it by grafting in peoples, Volkara, all the peoples into his kingdom. So it's not one earthly kingdom, it's his kingdom but it includes every people group in every land, and they um, need to love the Lord, honor him, and establish as much as possible of the, the wisdom of the kingdom in the land that they live. Now, in multilingual lands such as South Africa or Nigeria or Kenya or United States, um, it's better, and I, told, I said this yesterday, in my opinion, it's better to partition such lands. These are all Im lands imposed by imperialism. French, British, German, 
Italian, um, and Portuguese. And they just arbitrarily d d made the line. This is my opinion, and I think that that's the, 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 the wave of the future. Okay, so let's turn this one on. Well, here, I'll just, there we go. So, let me just pray. Father, you alone are our God. And thank you that Jesus is the King of glory, seated at the right hand of the Father, ruling over heaven and earth, having inherited every people group of the earth. And every people group and all the peoples and their kings must honor and worship the king, kiss the son, lest he be angry and you be destroyed in their way, and they be destroyed. And how blessed are everyone and family and um, tribe and nation and language that takes refuge in him. Father, give us wisdom. Father, I can't do this without you, Lord. I need your wisdom and your strength from your spirit. Open our eyes, blow away the fog, and let us understand your vision. And we ask this in your name, Lord. Amen. So here's my basic presupposition. Fuhr vor Unterstellung. All of theology is involved in mission. That's very important to understand. It's not about us. It's not about our little kingdom. It's not about our family alone. God wants the earth to be filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. That's the long-term vision. He, um, I remind many of my brothers, that, and I said it yesterday, that the Afrikaner folk has been a, a sin, has been a missional folk from the beginning, um, planting churches all throughout Africa. And there's been missionaries in Kurdistan. Once, once we were just in Kurdistan, the land of the Medes and the Persians. There was people that have, uh, Afrikaners who've died as martyrs in the last 15 years in the Muslim wor world. Um, so um, all theology must be oriented to God's mission and all mission must be theologically oriented. And God desires every aspect of every people group to come under the lordship of Jesus Christ, the King. He says, all authority in heaven and earth belongs to me. Now, go disciple every people group of the earth, every tall folk in Nasi. Disciple them, teaching them to trust, obey, follow everything that I've instructed you. Now, the very first command God gives to us is in Genesis 1. Begin there, the whole Bible. So that's what he wants. He, there's one wisdom from the one God, and he wants there to be beautiful language and cultural diversity. And that's what we hear in America. Our diversity is our strength. No, the more you have cultural uh, diversity in one regirung, uh, the more it becomes imperialistic. One tribe rules all. One ring rules all the other rings, if you've seen the... No, I think that it's best to have every people and their own land serving the Lord. That's just the, where I'm coming with this. So God wants the whole body of Christ and all of the earth in all of life to come under the rule of King Jesus. And he does this by sending forth on the day of Pentecost his spirit. And the background is Moses. They said to him, it's too much that you be like a king. You need to decentralize. And so he began to uh, pray, and the Lord said, yes, this is wise. And they decentralized the uh, regime of Israel so that he would be the final appeal court. But all the other uh, things would be on a local uh, a regional, provincial, and then he would be actually, it goes inward, he would be the final appeals. Notice it, it's not like this. That's Tower of Babel. It was like this. Less and less power towards the, towards the center. Most power towards the family and to the uh, close region. 
And God gave the Holy Spirit to the, to the 70 elders. And two were in the camp. I don't know if you remember that story. And they were prophesying and praising the Lord. And they said, should we kill them? He said, no. I wish everyone would receive the Holy Spirit like that. Well, what happens on the day of Pentecost? We all receive God's power so that we can build his vision, his kingdom. Now, God gives four aspects. I'm going to emphasize the tail, but I'm going to mention the four aspects of what God desires in building his kingdom. First, to break the resistance of Satan and sin and um, the world system, we need prayer, preaching, and planting thousands of groups of fo- Christ followers everywhere in every area of the world in language that they can understand. Mudertal. The children are to be brought up in their mudertal, in their own language. And eventually, with the vision that there would be thousands of people groups all worshiping the Lord and in the end in Revelation we see folkara not one folk folkara around the throne praising and worshiping the Lord I saw people from every tongue tribe and nation there worshiping the Lord that's the vision but it has to come with lots of prayer and the Afrikaner has that strong in Wellington, there was a chrut uh, opvecken. And in Chikirk, I know, they had every uh, day of Pentecost Day the prayer, but it's now dried up. It's no longer that fire. And that's why I say I'm an Andrew Murray, Abraham Kuyper, uh, um, Tia Luach. All Tia Ruchlungs. The power of God's Spirit and the vision for the transformation of life. Andrew Murray, Abraham Kuyper. And so, how do we do it? We have to build, not the state. We build um, Christian community. We then, as the people of God, build social services. The Afrikaner has a long tradition to see that one. What do we do? We gave it to the state. And then the state went humanistic. And look what the mess we're in. The chemors of our own I say, ons, I did it for but they... I was here until 24. I was an immigrant. Tot ik my werk verloor het. En toe ek, het ek terug in Amerika terug gegaan. Um, but we want to emphasize in this lecture on the um, cultural transformation that God desires. Um, you cannot start with trying to impose culture transformation with violent revolution. That's Marxism, that's Nazism, that's secular humanism, that's American revolution that's going on right now. You impose from top down. Never works, it leads to poverty, revolution, war, death, plague and sword, wild animals taking over because it's depopulation. That's what it says in the prophets, Ezekiel especially. But we want to begin with um, multitudes. We need hundreds and, and thousands of more cells of followers of Jesus among the Afrikaner people. Alvain Schwanepoel yesterday said there was at least 300,000 that in their research at the Apiaka uh, um, Quick School that are open to the good news of Jesus but not traditional church. So he says we need to begin to think, how are we going to reach them? Do many Christian done me, the Fusita from Circles, but I work it. He said, I see the Afrikaner leaving the traditional churches, and that's exactly what's happening. But they're open to the gospel. He says, maybe we need to go back to the original model of church, the house church. In China, in Iran, two of the fastest growing Christian movements in the world, it's built around home churches. We need thousands of these cells. The 
uh, older elders in each area, in each classes, they were responsible um the the Baya um high school oriented gemeenschappen to um kuster to to shepherd. Well then as these get growing, we don't just wait for hem- heaven. What do we do? We need to begin to transform our community and the, and the neighboring communities. First with your own folk, Jerusalem, and the people that are a little bit different from us, the Afrikaans, Priyakanta, Kapanar. And then the Tswana, the Zulu, to the ends of the earth. The Tiv, the Kikuyu in, in, uh, in, in the Lu, uh, Luo in Kenya. And we want to see Africa transform. God put the Afrikaner folk here as a Lucht tot die Nazis. Dan kijk. And that was a great tradition. Dear the geschiedenis van the Afrikaner. That ons is here as a Lucht for the Nazis. So the priority is the big. You can't build God's kingdom unless people come to b- repentance and truly being born again by the Spirit. Building social services and building community. First with our own people, but then helping the other neighboring people groups to do it as well. But we need to then begin to direct the whole movement. That's the tail. Those are the four principles, the five principles that we're going to look at. So we begin with our own families and communities, and then we, we transform every area of life. The British were a monarchy, top down, and the, those who were small are republicana, so it's the Bura Republica. Hulle wil nie a koning, en wil nie a biskop hy nie. Omdat Jesus is ons koning, en Jesus is ons biskop. We want to be republican, and this was um Paul in, uh, from the Transvaal and was it President Stein from the Freistaat. Hulle probeer republika op te stig wat christelig was. So in the various civil governments, <coughs> we must recognize they are not society. They are only one of the spheres of society. So I'm Kyperian. And we, they are all alongside of each other. The state must not attack and overcome the family, must na- not attack and overcome and rule over the uh, kerk. And there are different spheres, and each one is unafhankelijk, maar afhankelijk of the koning and ons biskop, Jesus Christus. So our, our goal is long-term work. It took us 300 years of the Enlightenment and anti-Christian philosophies to get to the point where we're at in the West. We pray that it won't take 300 years f- for us to rebuild. We don't want to use secular and man-centered ideologies where justice is equality. We want to use biblical justice. Justice is not equality. In America, they said, well, we want equality. So therefore, two mofis can get thrown Okay, I know that is a scale word, but maybe I have homosexual to say. But that's not biblical. That's not biblical. God says there are creational design norms or in the old days they would call it um, um, creation order. We can't break that unless we want to break our society. We need to have biblical justice. Biblical justice is impartial, a single standard, proactively exercise, for especially for the poor and the oppressed. Now, some people say, oh, that's communist. near. Didn't God have a, a compassion in a heart for the poor? Didn't he set up structures for, uh, for them to glean in the fields? Didn't he set up structures for if, 
the dominie had davon gepraat van die ochend uh, for the the people would um um have a way when they got poor um that they they could be helped those are structures not from the state but from the people that's biblical justice now in this context there's five neglected principles and those are what i call the tail tail of the eagle directs the flight it has to have first the beak much prayer much evangelism much church stuchtum it needs wings community building social services but it has to be directed by these five principles <coughs> we are a, a a a folk we are a people that's trinitarian that's extremely important we're not muslim we're not jewish we're not unitarian we're not deist all the other views of god we're a triune we believe in the triune god in the trinity when we understand it affects how our culture is built the second is our only authority and our final authority has to be khutz suwurt the sola scriptura principle third principle is god wants us to have a vision for restoration and god put the spirit on the uh, uh, in the people of god on the day of pentecost to restore not to wait for heaven yes yes wait for heaven but when we go to heaven it's only temporary any house because we're not yet resurrected he wants a physical body to be resurrected and where are we going to live for eternity on the new heavens and in the new earth the earth is our home not the veralt system but the earth is our home <coughs> everything that's good that we build here in the name of the lord jesus is going to be brought into the new heavens and the new earth i think some of the bach cantatas it says at the uh, at the in, at the end of every bach cantata soli deo gloria people's minds have those memorized and when they're resurrected <coughs> they'll be playing bach but they might you know and everything that's beautiful that's built for the kingdom here is is going to be restored so we're building for the future remember that we build now the kingdom but never perfectly but when the second coming and the and the uh, new heavens and a new earth comes all of that beauty will be brought into the kingdom the third is god wants us to be in relationship through forbold starting with the family then the uh, the uh, the uh, near the khasan family stam uh uh tall nasi under forbond uh, with god that's a covenant principle and five is just exactly like uh sabert le corni gister uh for uns uh van gepraat het van uh, tuasius that god's word from genesis to revelation is our mat stuff is our standard and we need to learn wisdom on how to apply it not exactly like the jews did because that was for their culture but the principles are taken out and put in every culture of the world so what is a trinitarian principle <clears throat> what is the sola scriptura principle well, let's look at these more so scripture mandates cultural transformation teaching them to obey everything that i have taught you beginning with the great khrut optag fun genesis ian so there's a twofold goal for every culture change individuals inner world view then you change the outside jesus said clean the inside of the cup and then the outside will become clean we don't start with the outside that's the religion of pharisees change the outside with all kinds of rules maybe you'll change the culture no change hundreds of thousands of afrikaners harta bring them into communities of the king and get them actively building their christian afrikaner culture and then help the tswana help the zulu 
help the Golsa. There's, they have a great potential of having their own area. They say, Nien, there is a part there. There's need the, the, the train apartheid, but it's the, the big vision of seeing God transform every people group so that they would worship God from their own land. That's what it says in the book of Zephaniah. Every people of the earth will worship the Lord from their own land. So our goal is, starting in the core, our heart allegiance. Who do we serve? Do we need from Ochenda from Kaprat? Who do you serve? Do we serve the Lord or do we serve Afkhuda? Anything that substitutes for the Lord is a, is a false God. Do we serve the Lord? And from the inner allegiance to the Lord, it changes our Liva and Verot Paskawang worldview. Then that has to change our behavior. If we really believe what God says, we will have a new change of behavior. And then artifacts be taken what Bo owns. Do we build according to the principles of God's word or we build according the, to the principles of the Afkula? So p- first is the Trinity is our social program. Now why? As biblical Christians, unity and diversity are equally valid. Can I what is more important for the folk? Yindrach mach mach of the folk and the folk, both unity and diversity. Okay, now what is diversity? Is a man a man in a fro a fro? Is it is it good? All three is good. There is diversity and unity. And some and together we build. You can't uh, destroy true created university um, diversity, and you can't destroy the desired unity. Both and that comes from our view of God. If you believe God is absolute one, like the Hindus, Brahman, everything must become one. If you ever studied the religion of Baha'i. Baha'i says, unity is the only thing that's good. There was one historic figure, politician from the cop, that believed that. Who was that? Jan Smuts. He says that the world is evolving into ever and more and more unity. He was a pantheist. And that's why it was gradual evolution towards more and more gradual evolutions to the new world order. He was one of the founders of the League of Nations and one of the, the, the founders of the United Nations. Their vision is not the biblical vision of an international confederacy of, of uh, people groups, all serving the Lord. Theirs was, and the religion of Baha'i says it ex- exactly right. One language, one world government, one um, world... Um, educational system ruled by a central government from the world. No, that's not the vision. Real created diversity of language, of uh, sex, two sexes, um, is a child equally uh, um, given the authority to rule as an adult? No. At the age 20 in in Israel, um, you received the Stemrach. If you study the Hebrew history, now in American history, traditionally it was 21. And I think that they thought, well, when you're finished 20, but I, as I've studied, I used to believe that, but I think it was actually when you finish 19 and you turn 20, then you're fully given the Stemrach. Well, children are not, uh, there's a diversity between a, a parents, adults, and children. So there's real diversity and real unity, and we must study what God how what God designed. So and um, um, uh, y- uh, Professor uh, Jan Stlebusch had uh, yesterday he gave a lecture on this. It was a very excellent one. So I won't belabor that more. But Trinity is very important for us to think 
as Trinitarian Christians. We're not Muslim. We're not pantheists. We're not Unitarians. We're not uh, Orthodox Jews. We're followers of King Jesus who is fully God and fully man. We're, fu- uh, we're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit who is both Lord and God. These three are one. So even when you think you have to have unity and diversity, no fact can be interpreted without a worldview. Our worldview is determined by the scripture alone. This is what they call coherence theory of truth. But coherence theory of truth isn't um, the only theory that we must hold to. There is the no worldview and, and, and no fact is uh, true it, apart from being in conformity with what we observe out in the world. Every cat is r- red. Is that true? That's not what we see out in the world. We have to be, have our facts conform to what is really actually out there. That's called the correspondence theory of truth. But if truth is truth, will it work to transform culture? Will it really work to transform your life? What do you think? Yes. All three must be worked together. It must be logically coherent. It must correspond to the facts of God's word and to his creation. And it, God's truth will long-term work. Not short-term. You know, Job was an example of short-term. But long-term, if you follow the Lord, you will prosper. It's not pen, uh, Pentecostal, you know, Health, wealth, and prosperity. You know, I tell God I want a Mercedes. I'm going to pray, and God will give me my Mercedes. No, no. But a people who follows the Lord will have long-term prosperity. Three in one. Even the way you think has to be Trinitarian. We could go on and on. Um, Jan uh, Schleibusch talked about that yesterday. The second is, what's our final authority? Is it tradition and Scripture? No. It's God's Word Alone, within God and Adi had to buy a chia liyasang dafan chia. This is building. This is the last uh, um, of the of the uh, of the lectures, building upon what has been said before. So we built everything. That was the Afrikaners. If you study the Paul Krier in the the Owens what wo the um, th- that wanted to build the Bura Republika. Okay, all that. But they tried to build on principles that comes out of God's word. Now you can't even use God's word at all in American court. If you do, the guy gets off. So that if you don't want to serve on the jury, they tell us, sort of a, uh, of a joke, say, I believe in death penalty for, f- for premeditated murder. They will throw you out of the jury pool immediately. <laughs> Because you're a Christian. But God builds upon his word. And that's what what happened in 1986 when they were necklace killing all the people in Suwetu and the other places. They earned the death penalty and they compromised. Margaret Thatcher, the prime minister of, of Britain, put pressure and they compromised. They didn't execute those who brutally mur- murdered people by burning them to death. That we have to build upon the word of God. That's what this principle is. Even science has to be built upon the principles of the word of God. Now the Bible is not a textbook. But it does give us a framework of wisdom within which to do science. It's a very important principle. Um, Philosophy, it's not a textbook of philosophy, but it gives us a framework of, thank you, gives us a framework of how to do science. Um, It gives us a framework how to do philosophy. It gives us the only framework of how to do faith, religion. So clear exegesis, clearly teaching the principles of God's word by sound principles of exegesis is the only authority we have. It's above Every tradition, religious tradition, scientific tradition, philosophical tradition. Now, restorative eschatology principle. We talked about that yesterday, and I 
had to make it short, and I wish we could have had longer time. But the Bible gives us a long-term hope. Now, there is ups and downs in culture because people um, grow as they are faithful to God's word and to faithful to God's spirit. And then when there's a falachet, the culture begins to decline. Right now, the Western culture is in horrible decline. We're getting ready to be destroyed. I said to somebody the other day, uh, yesterday I think it was, if Hagia Sophia, the greatest ancient church in the ancient world, could turn, be turned into a mosque, the day might come within 20 to 50 years that St. Peter's Basilica will be a mosque. That's al Kabir. Italians have 1.4, and I've heard that it's even declined, 1.3 children per, 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 per woman. You need to have 2.1 children per woman for it to stay the same. So what's happening to the Italian population? And who's, who's replacing those? The Muslims. They have three to seven children per family, maybe nine. Who's going to win? Long term, we need to have hope. And the hope is that Jesus' kingdom will reign. When we have hope, what do we have? Children. Okay, talk to Francois and talk to Slabi and all the other. <laughs> we build for the future because long term restoration comes through taking a hold of God's promises and building the, uh, on the word of God. So. <clears throat> Notice how history works. God planned it from the beginning. We call that the pactum salutis, the, the, the covenant of redemption in English. So he plans it beforehand. Then he gave a very good creation. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and it was created very good. And everything is good that God created if it's set apart with prayer in God's word. Paul says that. First, Tim, First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. Everything is good. If we set it apart by prayer, it will, it will be um, transformed for God. Humans dis destroyed the earth. It was humans' responsibility that the earth was destroyed, and God rebuilt it. And then there was a huge catastrophe again. In one sense, it was a catastrophe, but the other sense giving each people group, each clan, a language and sending them out on the earth was a first step to restoring the earth. Now why? Tower of Babel, Genesis verse chapter 10 and 11. He sent them out because they refused to go out. If they had obeyed God, there would have developed different cultures and different languages. If you go to Switzerland, they all speak Dietz. Well, on in kan van die berg, that is a tal wat diets is, Zwitser diets. Maar jy kan dit nie verstaan, jy kan nie die andere ouwens wat ook Zwitser diets um, praat, on the other kant van, van the, uh, on the other side of the, of the mountain. Because isolation always creates new languages. What did God do? He sent them out with languages. And then he calls Abraham. What does he say? In your child and in your children, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And then <clears throat> the Jews fail. Jesus succeeds in obeying the great commission, the great opdracht, five minutes. And then Christ comes. The cross and the resurrection and the coming of the power of the Holy Spirit sends us out into all the earth. You're either a goer or you're a sender. There's no civilians in the kingdom of God. I'm not just here, oh, jy kan domini word, jy kan sendeling word. Ek is hier, ek wil net my eie TV en my rugby en, en my beer en ek sit daar met my, my TV klikker en ek, dit is wat lewe is. Ons noem dit die American dream. 
Oh, it's not so good in South Africa. Oh, go to America. That's not what the kingdom of God is about. He gave us a commission. Step by step, every enemy is destroyed. The curse is being reversed step by step. We are not to acquiesce to polio. We're not to acquiesce to smallpox. We're not to acquiesce to monkeypox. We're not to acquiesce to COVID. We're to fight against it with all the power of God's wisdom that he gives to us through the Spirit. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And then comes the second coming. He wants to take every area of culture, turn it back. Okay, this is from um, Albert Wolters. Um, it's a very powerful book. And he's a, a, a Doyavirian Canadian scholar. But, and I took this from his book, um, Creation um, Restored. Or is it Creation Regained? I can't remember what the title. Yeah, Creation Regained. Outstanding book. It'll transform your worldview. Every area of culture must be transformed from serving Satan through repentance to serve Jesus as Lord. And so history works as a series of waves. One wave comes in like a tsunami. Comes in, and it fernita alles. God's kingdom comes in, not to destroy, but to build. But then it goes back out. But then it'll come in again larger and bigger. But eventually he wants to see the whole earth filled with the wave of God's Holy Spirit so the earth will be filled with the knowledge of God as the waters cover the sea. The, God, the goal is restorative eschatology. It gives you a realistic but long-term view of the future. Now the uh, fourth principle is covenant. Every area of life is to be transformed by covenant. Uns verbundsvolk. Every people should become a, f- uh, a kingdom people. How do we know? Isaiah 19. I'll read one verse, and I'm going to go. probably have to go over about five minutes. Um, Isaiah 19. If you have a Bible or of a, of a telephone, hit. Isaiah 19. Here's what the vision for the future is. Some people say, no, it's only the new covenant is only on the individual. No. The new covenant is built around the, the, uh, the chassin, family, folk. 19. He says, the day will come when Egypt and uh, Syria, Assyria, to the north and to the south, will become covenant peoples just like Israel. Iman okay. Elias Faith in Twentach in Isaiah Nichentin. Can Peter hit you? Okay. What, 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 what? Whoa. Wie is gegeepte? My folk. Who come? The whole people has come to b- repentance. Keep going. Whoa. That was Israel. No. Assyria will become a follower of King Jesus and become a covenant folk. Israel. God, that's God's vision for the end. That's called the covenant. Every people, every family, every chesen will come into the enter into covenantal relationship individual family ecclesi, ecclesiastic ecclesial governments that's the church governments and civil governments should come under covenant with god now what will happen then god will hold them and discipline them and then sometimes god has to destroy them if they if they continue in stubbornness and rebellion and then you rebuild why Abram Kuyper, there's no neutral ground. There's not a square inch in the whole domain of our human existence over which Christ, who is king and sovereign over all, does not say, mine, mine. King Jesus is Lord of all. There's no neutrality. Even the language we speak 
belongs to King Jesus. That's our common ground. Even the science that works comes out of the, the wisdom that God, King Jesus, gave to us. That's common ground, but it belongs to King Jesus. It's not neutral ground. He t- says, turn everything into uh, back and bring science in covenant with God, family in covenant with God, church in covenant with God, medicine in covenant with so that the whole of life is transformed. He, as the, the tri- uh, triune God, rules over all three, family, civil government, ecclesial government, and all other spheres of life. So we see the triune God is king. He rules over all. Now that is Jan Smutsavizi. Dit is op die Amerikaanse dollar. The state rules over everything. The state is society. No. The state is only one very small, limited, very small, limited area. Okay. Ek is nie a anarchist. Ek is a baie, hallo noemd it, a minarchist. Very limited. And we allow the, the, the state to take over because we let them. And then the last is, every command of God has present relevance to contemporary culture at the core level of meaning. This is exactly what Slobert said to, uh, and what to, uh, Tuitius, and I, I'm sad I didn't have that quote to put up here. Every principle of God's word must be applied to all of culture. Not exactly as they said, because remember, if you were chopping down a tree and your ax head comes off and accidentally kills your friend, is that murder? No, that's the difference between in American Anglo-British law, um, the difference between, um, pardon? Yeah, manslaughter versus premeditated murder. And so what did they do? You run and flee to a city called the city of refuge. Well, we don't have city of refuge, but we make the distinction between manslaughter and murder. You see, those principles, every single one, we put to the, to, to, um, to the test, and we change it by the grace and the authority of God. So the Mosaic Covenant gives us one example of a federal republic. Now, what, what particular federal? Verbont. It's a covenant republic. And there is independent provinces or stata of canton in, uh, in Switzerland. It was verkeerd in die nieuwe voor die broedermond om hier die hele land in een centraliseerde regering te oorzet. Why did, it, it could have been very easy to let the, the Zulu have autonomy and the Kosa to have autonomy and the Tswana to have autonomy. Maybe a clean sticky grond voor die Afrikaner ook. Ek hoop dat het sal groter as a klein stikkie. But in alcohol, we sinned. They sinned. Now, why do I say Brudelbond? Because I worked for a Brudelbond uh, organization, Circles. Christian Dan was Brudelbond. He had from me gevraagd, will you work a Brudelbond? I said, no, I can't. Peter Willem Jordan said, Pa, he had to get He was a great African Brudelbond. I think it was not more Brudelbond, it was what. Uh, Enige een bond nou. Ook die ouwens wat groen en geel en blauw hart. Hulle is ook een broeder. So the sum of your word is truth. Every one of your righteous ordinances is everlasting. Don't throw out any of the wisdom of God. So it was a, a God's Hebrew republic. It was a republic. It was not a monarchy. Remember, did God want them to have a centralized, centralized monarchy? No. He told them if they do, they're gonna, it's going to destroy you, and it did. So look at how the law works. It's all about glorifying God. Whatever you eat and whatever you drink, do all to the glory of God. So the earth must be filled with the glory of God. But how do we glorify God? We, we love God, and we love our neighbor. Well, how do you love your neighbor? 
he gives us four commands about loving God, six about loving your neighbor. Well, how do you um, not murder? How do you define murder? Well, then, all the rest of the laws, in order in the book of Deuteronomy, gives an exposition of command one, command two, command three, all the way up to command ten. That's becoming a consensus amongst uh, Old Testament scholars. It was not arbitrary. It was all carefully organized to give us a model. And Professor Walter Kaiser just said, Old Testament law is not so secretive and so bound up to the Hebrew culture that we can't learn from it. It tells us what the character of the lawgiver was. And it gives us instructions on how to build our culture. We have to learn to be wise and do it. And we're going to beclay over, you know, Hiri Duotsrof is is uh, of 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 ni, and, but we can we can discuss the details, but the principles must come uh, into uh, existence to transform. We must be put into a transformative connection with our culture. So it comes out of God's character, and then um, we see that God's law is capsulized by two commandments, and it's summarized by ten commandments. And all the other commandments apply it to culture. That's where we uh, will we'll struggle with. Because what is cultural and what is uh, for every culture? What is only for the Hebrew culture and what is for every culture? So there's then five principles that the Ten Commandments gives to us. Three of them were put into the American Constitution. I know I'm about ten minutes over, right? Okay. Whoops. Um, <coughs> He gives us liberty under the God in whom we trust. Two commandments. Which two commandments is it? Liberty under the God whom we trust. The first and the second. I am the Lord your God. He read it this morning. Who took you out of the house of slavery to set you free. Now serve me. Because if you serve an idol, you will have your culture be destroyed. Don't make any idols. Protect life from conception to death. Two commandments. Two commandments protect the family. You respect your ma and pa so that you can live long on the earth. And what is the other one? That protects family. Two-parent, heterosexual, not homosexual, heterosexual family. Impartial justice, to protect justice. When you lay an oath down, keep it. Don't make an oath in vain in the name of the Lord. And don't lie. Don't commit perjury in a court of law. That protects impartial justice. And to protect private property. What the tuya. And... Those are the five pillars of society. Liberty, impartial justice, life, family, and property. What happens when you destroy life? You begin to take out that pillar. Okay, maybe it'll stand for a while. But what to destroy life, you have to destroy family. When you got two pillars, what happens to the to the off dock? It's stored in area. That's what's happening to South Africa. That's what's happening to France, to Germany, to Italy, to America, to Canada, New Zealand, Australia, all the lands where you want to immigrate to. <laughs> Begins with the worship of God, to love God and love people. Begins with loving your neighbor enough to telling him that he needs or she needs to turn to Lord Jesus in repentance, to become born again. So what happens? We should restore these. We abandon the South African Reserve Bank, which is in the hands of the Geldmach, the Welt Geldmach. The House of Rothschild owns every single reserve bank in the world. And when, when the House of Rothschild is not obeyed and you want to set up gold as your system, you get conquered. Libya. South Africa w made a huge mistake. They had all the gold they needed to have a, a, a good foundation 
for economic prosperity. Put the money back in the hands of the people. Sound coinage. Abandon individual income tax. Income tax is for the, re the regime to get more power, more money. And then it goes into whose pockets? Not yours, to their pockets. Who comes as comes to a throat, no? Wage is only defensive wars, no, no offensive wars. No prison for property crimes. You pay uh, the victim back if you steal from them. You pay them back restitution. Abortion, marriage, and divorce laws must be reformed. 1975, they changed all three of those. And South Africa, within three years, was on the way to... Welfare, medical care, and drug law reform. All of those things need to be rebuilt. That's the vision. Now, long term, are we willing to, to become a wise people or we, we want to be foolish? Do we want to serve God or do we want to serve idols? Do you want to build upon God's word, bring every area under covenant with Jesus, King Jesus as Lord? Do we want to trust in the, that the Trinity is really important? Or do we want to do it our way? Here's what he says. Uh, Jeremiah 17. Cursed is the warrior who trusts in Adam and Adam, mankind, and who makes the flesh his sword arm of strength, in whose heart turns away from the Lord. Cursed. Blessed is the man and the nation and the people whose trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers, will never fear when the drought comes, and um, will always bear fruit because it's planted in the, in the Lord and himself. Let's, let's pray. Father, give this a, a desire to say, Lord, I want to build long term. Not for me, not for my children, my grandchildren, maybe my grand, great-grandchildren. We want to see South Africa again built upon the kingdom of God, but wiser and better this time. In America, Father, we ask you for this, for us to, to trust your word more than our feelings. And we ask you that you would give us wisdom and power by your Holy Spirit to do this. We ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen.